the Tuesdays we're just going to be doing, um, I mean, I guess just a little bit of catch up, but mainly like the, the phone role play, just practicing our calls and what we're saying to agents and whatnot. Let's just give a couple more minutes here, see if we get some more people to join and then also give Alex some time to join back as well. In the meantime, though, I know there's only like uh, how many people are on this call, just 11 of us now, but I'm wondering if anyone has any feedback they want to share, any questions or anything like that so far um, from from this week or if you weren't on the Saturday call from last week as well. Or any newer people that are, are just starting out and starting to make calls here soon. I know uh, Jonathan, we spoke earlier today about that one lead who was uh, who was speaking earlier. I think Victor, does anyone want to chime in? Uh, yeah, I don't mind chiming in. Um, so, uh, you know, the, uh, the direct to agent leads are great for practice, but I don't know how many of you guys find uh, yourself calling and the realtor telling you that you are, you know, the lucky one million caller asking to do sub two. Um, it's, I feel that some of these agents, some of them do their due diligence and present the offers and how it works and explain it the best they can. Uh, but I feel that some of them, they just either they're not familiar, they don't understand it, or like somebody mentioned on the on the chat earlier that the agent was going to refer to some other agent because they didn't want to do anything illegal. Um, like, I feel that they don't understand what it is. And, and I'm wondering, how many of those can we actually move, like, towards... Uh, is there anything ethically, legally that maybe we can skip the realtor, not cutting them out, but kind of like going direct to the to the seller and be like, hey, look, are you familiar with this method, you know, and, and go from there? Yeah. So ethically, we can't really do that. Legally, I guess you could say we could, but we le well, ethically, we don't want to be going around the agent's back. Then we're skip tracing data, trying to find the seller's info and saying, hey, the agent you're working with doesn't want to present this offer to you, this and this and that. Um, here's what we're presenting. Is this something you want to do? And likely that person's never heard a subject to themselves and don't know what it's like. And then they, when they reach out to their agent, the agent's automatically one going to be pissed because you went behind their back. And then two, the agent's also going to just basically shoot it down. If the agent already shot it down once, if you know, there's no way you just go to directly to the seller and the seller says, yeah, we'll do, totally do sub two. Let me not check with the agent. So that agent's going to be that guru go-to person for real estate information. So you definitely don't want to go behind the person's back, but I also understand your point. And that's just how it is. Um, a lot of these agents are receiving phone calls from other investors pitching sub two. Um, th that's definitely no doubt. I mean, that's the same with anything though. If you're calling pre foreclosure lists, you're probably actually even getting more saturation than that. If you're calling um, direct to agent, 90 plus days on market looking for like a, a seller finance deal, that's going to be really saturated. If you're even just having a VA cold call, because I used to have VAs cold calling direct to seller on not even high motivated lists, not even like lists where it's pre foreclosure or anything like that, literally just straight up high equity, non-owner occupied lists. These people were still receiving handfuls of calls, not always a day, depending on the market, but at least a week. Um, where they're just like, oh man, we're getting a lot of, of calls. Like this, this is a saturated industry. It's just making yourself stand out from the competition, whether it's us doing direct to agent or something else. The, the main factor there is just being able to stand out from others. And, um, you know, the more of these you do, the more conversations you have, you'll, you'll notice your confidence and ability to explain these things get better. And that's what's going to be good and kind of allow for more of a snowball effect. And, and earlier today, I don't think he's on the call here, but uh, Ronald, there was a lead that we spoke with a month ago that wasn't open to sub two whatsoever, was skeptical about it. And then the property has been sitting there on market with not much action. And then I get on a three-way phone call, explain everything a lot more, more thoroughly um, and then present the offer again. And it seems like she's a lot more open to it now. So time is another factor and also being somewhat consistent with follow-up as well too. And um of course, like you said, though, you know, of course, there are going to be other people making these offers. It's just presenting the most credibility behind yourself, because a lot of these people, they won't actually make offers. They'll just throw out a number 
and then that's it. So they'll they'll either just say, hey, this is where I'm at. I'll take over the payments or, hey, here's my LOI. Like a lot of people will just send out LOIs, not do a follow-up call and that's it. But with us, if something looks solid numbers wise, like I'm, we're sending over that LOI, calling the agent and then basically saying, hey, this works for us. If your seller's on board with this, I'll have a contract over in an hour and I can hop on a three-way call with you and the seller and explain everything in terms of what the contract looks like or if there's any specific questions. Or if you want a third party, I could have one of my realtors that I've closed these deals with before hop on a call. I could have my transaction coordinator, closing attorney. Like there's a whole bunch of different things that we can leverage to bring more credibility. And then there's other instances too, where it's just, Hey, it's just not a deal. And we have to move on. Like, I think, um, like 90% of the deals or leads, I should say submitted over the last like 24 hours, which I think there was like eight, um, I think two of those eight, we sent LOIs on the others were like too high of interest rate. There's no exit strategy. Um, the house is priced way more than what it's worth. So there's just, you know, it's really just a numbers game, not only with the direct agent, but just in this industry in general, not just this industry, just sales in general too, even. Um, yeah, sorry. That was kind of a long, a long response to that. I don't know. Did that answer that, that question or at least give some feedback that was useful? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And like you mentioned, you know, it, it does for great practice, great intro, because, you know, it's kind of hard to jump in and just say something like, hey, you old guys open to sub two, you know, usually yeah. um, I would like to send you guys. I, I recorded a couple of the calls and and, you know, if I would like to send it to you guys and then you can give me feedback on on what would you add, what would you subtract? from that conversation does that come across you know uh polite and all of that stuff you know some some yeah. general feedback and um but yeah it's kind of hard you know because we know we're not the first calling about sub two and that's not how you want to jump in into it and just hey you want to do sub two now okay cool bye you know yeah so and yeah completely understand that's we're definitely not doing that though we're not calling or we shouldn't be calling and saying yeah, yeah, instantly dinner. Do you want to do subject to, are your sellers open what? subject to? Um, hey, I think. Oh, Vince, sorry, uh, you're unmuted there. No, I don't know. Let me mute Jack, You could mute him. Yeah, I just muted him. I wasn't sure if he's asking a question. Um, mega brain freeze, brain fart. What were we, what were we saying? <laughs> no, we were saying that we're, we're not jumping in, just asking, hey, you yeah. guys are open to sub two. Yeah. So we're not doing that at all. We're. And of course, there are some agents where you literally just call them and they will say, is this about sub two right when you call them? And that's one of those <laughs> yes. like where it's in the description, probably in a really major city that says 2.5% interest rate assumable. But there's there's one deal we have right now in escrow that we're closing on next week where this agent was getting like five, 10 plus calls a day because it's in that Phoenix metro area. It was a 2.5% interest rate. But I was able to build rapport with that agent and basically show her that we're credible buyers, we'll perform on this. And I had a decent amount of conversations with her, which separated us from the other, I don't know, I don't know if I'd say hundreds, but dozens and dozens and dozens of other people that were calling trying to get that deal locked up. Um, of course, that's not always going to be that way. There are some agents where they're just like, you might have to just catch them at right day, right time. Um, and then of course, if the agent is open to it, then of course, then it pivot, pivots off to the seller. And then of course, the seller is the one who's mainly makes the decision. <laughs> Sometimes the agent will have yeah. influence though. But uh, yeah, so definitely you don't want to be just saying, hey, are you open to sub two? It's more of a conversation and building rapport first of, of kind of talking about the property. And and I don't know if you've gone through um, those pre-recorded videos we have or some of our calls, but we're definitely not jumping into it saying, hey, are you open to sub two? That's probably maybe three to five minutes plus into the conversation where we're mainly just kind of giving a little bit of information on what we're looking for, saying how we like the property, how it fits our buy box, um, and then kind of pivoting into, hey, I see that there's not much equity in this deal here. Um, what's kind of the seller's motivation? What's going on here? And, and having a deeper conversation with that, then pivoting into what if we just came over and took over their existing mortgage payments and put some cash in their pocket, paid your commission and closing costs. So that will definitely help with results in terms of instead of just instantly sharpshooting, Hey, are you open to sub two? We definitely want to build rapport first, but of course, at the same time, there are, there are going to be those instances still where you can't do that when they just answer the phone and say, Hey, are you, if this is a sub two offer, the sellers aren't interested. 
I guess you could always say, well, why is that? You know, we're not necessarily coming with just a sub two offer. You know, we do make cash offers as well and likely probably wouldn't work as a cash offer if it's low equity, <laughs> but we're still just having <laughs> yeah. that. We're still having that statement just to kind of broaden it and maybe see why that seller isn't open to sub two and possibly being able to answer an objection that might be in place. Like um, one earlier, one three-way phone call I was on, one of the reasons I shot it down a month ago too was their VA entitlement. And then basically now I was talking to this to the agent more so to get a better understanding of how that VA, enti VA entitlement would work and kind of explaining how basically just getting a better understanding of their scenario or the seller scenario. And it seems like that hurdle was kind of covered um, and, and jumped over, which is good. But um, yeah, I would say don't get discouraged by it. I, you know, I'd be discouraged if it was two months from now and you were making 30, 40 plus calls a day and there was nothing and it was all just, hey, hang, stop calling me, hang up the phone, blah, blah, blah. We're not interested. But, um, you know, you will definitely have some solid leads if you, if you keep sticking with it. But of course, you know, that's one thing you're going to encounter our agents <clears throat> basically saying what you just stated. Yeah, no, and don't get me wrong. Uh, I know this is a numbers game and a no doesn't discourage me. You know, the way I looked at it, I, I used to sell cars before. And so uh, it's a little different game because when people come to the dealership looking for yeah. a car, that means they're in the market, you know? And so, but I completely understand that it's a number game. Yeah. You know, the more you talk to people, the more leads you're going to get, the more deals you're going to do, you know, and it's, you know, it, uh, hypothetically you know out of 100 people you talk to you probably get 10 leads out of those 10 leads you may be close to deals you know in a good month or whatever but uh but yeah no definitely not discouraged um and uh yeah looking looking forward to keep, keep making more calls yeah and i like what you said too about that um that analogy in terms of the the car sales um in terms of like that's inbound, right? Like someone's going to go to a car dealership to obviously purchase a car. It's not us coming at them and saying, Hey, do you want to buy a car? Um, yeah. So the same thing is with the the properties that are listed on market. Of course they want to sell their house. There's motivation there. Doesn't yeah. mean they're open to sub two, but what we can do is we can increase the likelihood drastically of them being open to sub two by us pulling our data the way we pull it. So we're pulling these low equity lists and skimming them through another platform we use and really trying to narrow it down to the data where, okay, these properties pretty much if the seller sells at this ask price where it's listed at, they're making no money. Sometimes they're making five grand. Sometimes they're losing 20 grand. Um, it really just depends. But there are some scenarios where the house is listed on market for three months, four months. And if they drop below ask price, then they're writing a check at closing where we can come in and say, hey, we can close this within 30 days. We'll take over your payments. We'll actually put five thousand dollars in your pocket instead of you having to write a ten thousand dollar check at closing, and um, you know you're no longer going to have to make these monthly payments while that property's just sitting there, hopefully trying to find a buyer that might never come through. So that's another thing as well too. Like, of course, there's motivation there because the property's listed on market, but it's not like we're just blindly hoping and throwing. Um, like a lot of these fit the specific criteria for a sub two deal um as well yeah definitely and uh yeah sometimes you know other than ask a, a, an agent you know what's the motivation for for the seller or why are they not open for any creative financing deals um i guess you know if you guys have any insight on on how to dig into that a little deeper because sometimes this is what i run into um, the agents are in the car. So as it is, they're not paying hundred percent attention. Um, but it's kind of like the seller it's, it's up to the seller's decision. And I feel that I'm talking to somebody that is not willing to, and it's not necessarily that they're not willing to present the offer. I feel that if they're not, if they don't understand the concept and how it works and all the benefits and blah, blah, blah. I don't feel like they feel confident enough to present it to the seller and yeah. having that middleman. That's what's like, you know, why I was making the comment earlier. Is there any possible way to go directly to the seller? Yeah, no, that's totally true. And I've even said that to Alex before a decent amount of times where I'm like, Oh man, this agent is not fun to deal with. Um, this agent <laughs> isn't really doing their job. I wish we could just call the seller. But then at the same time, like I was saying, that's not going to do anything for us because that agent is 
the um, source of knowledge and information when it comes to real estate for that seller. So they're going to go back to the agent regardless. It's going to burn the bridge in that relationship. It's not very ethical for us to do that. And there's so many properties out there listed on market right now that fit that criteria that it's not even worth trying to go behind the scenes and try to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. no, and it makes it makes complete sense. Now, um, something that, that I asked before. So this agent, you know, it looked like the property, the way it was sitting, they were going to have to come in with cash at closing, no doubt. Um, okay. However, you know, when I reached back to the agent and I said, hey, you know, what did the seller said about the proposal? And from the get-go, from call number one, he was very uh, uh, dismissive, very short, you know, almost sounded kind of rude. And so um, he says, oh, they're going to take it off the market and and then reevaluate their position. Would it be unethical then for me to go uh, door knocking? Like, you know? No, yeah, it wouldn't be dollars. unethical. It wouldn't be unethical then because that house is off market. Um, and that's what some people do. Like Alex and I have maybe thought about incorporating that somewhat sooner, like pulling some expired listings where, you know, a listing expired or it's no longer on, off market. They pulled it off market. Then that's not unethical because, you know, it's off market now and it's not listed with that agent anymore. So you could totally do that. That would be acceptable. Um, it's more so just when it's listed on market, we don't want to be going behind that agent's back. Okay. So what I failed to mention is, and I haven't checked, but what I failed to mention is what if he just told me that to get rid of me and the house is actually still on the market? Then I would just, I mean, honestly, I would just forget about it. Like that's the other okay. thing too. There's so many other opportunities. It's not worth playing the game of what you said. It was off market. Now I looked and it's on market. Then it's just like that agent doesn't want to deal with us. And then it's just like, okay, whatever, let's move on. There's plenty of other fish in the sea. Um, just because someone like that won't be fun to deal with or work with anyway. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. But no, I appreciate appreciate those questions there. I'm sure that was was helpful for others to hear too. Um, I'm wondering, does anyone else have any questions or, or check-ins from this this past week or so far this week that they want to share? Hey. I, I mean, and I don't know, if, I don't know if this is a method that you use, Jack or Alex, but sometimes when when the realtors have gotten a little snarky with me, I kind of, I kind of almost give give it a little bit back to them, and it's it actually sort of loosens their mood. Like if you you know if you can kind of be quick witted and and like and catch them in, in what they're doing to you and do it right back to them, they're like they kind of like. Yeah, they backpedal a little bit and they seem to at least be a little bit more open to conversation. I don't know if that's something that you, you've done, but like, I, I mean, I've actually had, I've progressed like over the last few weeks and I've actually had some really good conversations in the last two weeks with, with some realtors, some of which have been, you know, like looking to dismiss me within 30 seconds and others, you know, others are, are pretty open, but it's just, it's just something that's worked for me. Um, if you can be sort of quick witted and have that, you know, have that, uh, you know, at your disposal and shoot right back at them, they do, they do tend to like realize the error of their ways and, and, and yeah. are a little bit more open. What's an example of that, um, that, that you've used? Cause there's a difference uh, between that and then coming off as like a douche. <laughs> yeah, sure, no, you're right. Sure you're right. You're I, I got to think that yeah. I'm not though. Like, I, like yeah. I almost, I, I, cause it's the way, it's the way you deliver it too. Like, I'm trying to think of which one. I mean, well, the one I told you on Saturday was definitely, one of them but there was another one recently where she got real snippy with me oh, god i gotta think of it i totally um, know what you mean though like because i do that too where it's like you almost kind of have to check them a bit so they don't just like i don't know it's i wouldn't say it's like a power trip thing but like sometimes you do have to kind of just check the agents a bit and make sure they're they're not um i don't really do that too frequently but there are instances like like alex with with uh with that one in Arizona, for example, like Tammy had like a huge attitude and stuff. And I mean, not like checking her in a rude way, but I'm just like, you know, I had to check her a couple of times where it's like, okay, like let's take it easy here. Um, I, I, I did call one woman back to check on something and she, she goes, I'm like, Hey, yeah, we uh, spoke about the property, uh, the such and such two weeks ago. And um, she goes, she's like, uh, okay, well, if you say so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, 
I, I, I think I, my response was, well, well, what I, I don't know what her name was. Like, let's say it was Katie. I'm like, well, Katie, I'm sorry I didn't make that great of an impression on you. And and she she chuckled, and then she was like, you, you could tell like it was almost like a burden to her by calling her back. And then she chuckled, and then she was open to have a conversation. <laughs> and I actually think I ended up yeah. submitting that lead to you guys. So like, just I, I don't know. Like one of the things I forget where the hell I saw. I, I might have been listening to a Bigger Pockets podcast where they were talking about cold count calling on wholesale, and it was one of the it's one of the more recent ones, and or maybe it was a real estate rookie. And the guys the guys a pretty good like wholesaler and. I think one of the things he was kind of saying was almost like, like being yourself, right? Yeah. Like, so just like, so, I, and I kind of, I kind of took that to, in a consideration, just started like almost just trying to talk to these people, right? As opposed to coming in with this, you know, guns a blazing type thing. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm here to pitch you, you know, I'm here to pitch you and just kind of like a little bit more relaxed and talking to people and like, I think it's worked for, you know, it's worked a little bit better for me. Like I said, I, I, I've, I've submitted more leads in the last two weeks than I did in the first, you know, probably three or four previously. So I don't know. I don't know if that's the right or the wrong way, but it, it's definitely yeah. something that's been helping. And I don't know why the hell my video is not working. You can't see my beautiful face. <laughs> You're good. Um, <laughs> I'm not really sure what the hell happened here. Gotcha. No, yeah, that's a very, that's a very good point to share. And I'm glad you shared that because that's another thing too. I mean, not just the real estate stuff in general, but of course I'd say actually with the real estate stuff, it's going to matter more than anything because we're trying to separate ourselves from other people. And if we're calling sounding like, and of course we have scripts for framework. Um, but if we're calling and it sounds like we're reading off a script, then that agent isn't going to take us very seriously. Um, so of course being yourself and adding some individualism in there to build a rapport and whatnot too, I think is, is a great, uh, add to make as well so thanks for sharing that uh that nugget no there and um so anyone else want to share something really quick here for the last 30 minutes i think the typical structure we're just going to do on tuesdays from now is just like a quick little check-in like this and then also do the uh the role playing just like cold call role play with one person being the acquisitions person interested in the in the, the property and the other person being the agent um so if no one has any other questions, though, we will do one or two just practices with with me and someone else. And then after that, we'll go into breakout rooms and pair each of you off with um, with each other just to do a little bit of practice. So anyone who wants to volunteer for uh, for this, who feels like, you know, they feel pretty comfortable on the phone, or even if you don't feel comfortable on the phone, if you want to volunteer and do like a role play where you are the person interested in the property and I'm the agent. Um, we could totally do that. And then Alex and I will kind of just give some feedback afterwards. Does anyone want to do that? I'll be, I'll be open to do that. Okay. Awesome, Victor. So, you know, you could just say one, two, three main street, whatever it is, and just kind of make up things as you go um, with the role play. So whenever you're ready, go ahead. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, is this Alex? Um, okay, I'm gonna be talking, so say Jack. <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. Uh, no, you're good. Oh, you're so good. Is, this, is this Jack? Yeah, speaking. How can I help you? Hey, Jack. Hey, uh, I hope I caught you at an okay time. Do you have a couple of minutes to talk? Uh, I got a few minutes for you, yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, listen, Jack, I was calling about 123 Banana Street. Okay. And uh, I was wondering, I noticed here in the, on the listing that there's a HOA. And so I was wondering if we come to an agreement uh, is there any restrictions on putting any tenants at the property? Um, with the HOA, there's going to be a 90 day restriction for, for rentals. So you wouldn't really be able to do like an Airbnb with it, but, um, you could definitely, you know, have a tenant in there more longer term. Is, is this something you were, you were looking at maybe putting an offer on? Well, yeah, you know, we, uh, we buy a couple of properties, uh, uh, a week and your property, you know, at one, two, three banana street, you know, it just works for, for, for what we do. So uh, I've noticed that uh, the property, you know, has, has a little bit of a low equity. Is there any certain problems with the property? Maybe forbearance that maybe the owner, you know, is having any issues that maybe you can help me with maybe the reason why they're selling. Um, yeah, the owner, there's no forbearance or anything. The owner really isn't having too many issues. He just got 
a new job opportunity out of state. So he's moving back to Arizona and um, he just needs this house sold pretty much. And, you know, it's, it's been on market for about 30 days now and we've, we've been getting a bit of traction on it, but no super serious offers yet. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah, that sounds something maybe we can help him with. And uh, do you have any idea on, on what his cost is going to be um, at the end of the day? Maybe, you know, how much money we'll be able to, 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 to put in his pocket to move to the new uh, city? Um, well, currently at, at, at ask price right now, he would be walking away with about 10 to about 10 K in his pocket, I believe. So he was, you know, hoping for that at, at least, um, yeah, he's, he's looking to, you know, just be done with the property and be able to move on with his life. Okay. Well, no, that sounds great because, um, actually my partner and I, uh, we might be able to put a little bit more money on his pocket and completely fully pay your commission. And, uh, and, and, and maybe he's happy that way, you know, he got a little extra money that he wasn't counting on. Maybe is that something you guys might be interested in doing? Um, I mean, I'm, how would that, how would that work? I'm not sure what you're, what you're saying there. You would come in above ask price or. Well, what we'll do, uh, what we do is, you know, we take over the mortgage payments. We put, you know, we take care of the closing costs. We take care of your commission. Um, we pretty much put, you know, a little bit more money in his, in his pocket that way, uh, he's happy with it and there's an upside to it and he's able to move from that property, you know, and, and, and wash his hands pretty much. And then we just take over the payments. You know, we do everything through a uh, note processing company where uh, it takes care of everything. You know, the payments get made every single month on time and he doesn't have to worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Actually I did speak with someone, I think two weeks ago that mentioned it to us but they never sent over anything in, in writing that I could present to the seller on. Um, so I'm definitely, I don't know much about that, but I'm definitely interested in, in sharing that and seeing if that's something he's open to. Um, is So what exactly would your offer be then? Or what do you need from me to, to make an offer? Perfect. Yeah, you, you read my mind right there, man, because I was about to ask you that. Um, I'll be more than happy to put something in writing in the next five minutes. The only thing I need from you, it's uh, the, the total payment, you know, including taxes, interest, um, you know, all of that, um, your loan balance. And uh, I believe that's pretty much it. If you can provide me those those two numbers, um, I'll go ahead and, and send it to my underwriter and we can send you an offer in writing, like I said, here in the next 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know those numbers off the top of my head, though, right now. I think the remaining balance was around 300 k but I'll definitely reach out to my client and see if this is something that he's willing to provide, which I don't see why not, because, you know, like I said, he is trying to sell this pretty quickly here, and it has been on market for a little bit. So I'll get that information and, and send it over to you as soon as I get that. Okay. Uh, so when would be a good time to call you back to get those numbers from you? Um you could call me later this evening my my seller he should be off of work now and hopefully i hear back from him in the next hour or so but let's just say to be safe let's talk this evening okay so um another thing too that uh we can get on a on a three-way call uh with your seller just in case they have any questions about how all this works and maybe put to rest some of the some of the questions that he has instead of kind of like relaying it to you and going back and forth, maybe eliminate some of that. Uh, so I'm, I'm willing to, to work with whatever you guys want to do. Uh, but yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, it's six 30 right now. I don't want to disturb your sleep. Is it okay if I call you at eight o'clock? Yeah, that'll work. That'll work perfectly. Awesome. All right, Jack. Well, I'll call, I'll talk to you at eight. Great. Thank you, Victor. I look forward to working with you. Take care. Thank you. That was good. I like that. That was, that was good, man. Um, I guess the only thing that I, there was two things, one I forgot, but one of them was also making sure you're asking for the interest rate as well too. Um, interest so rate. Yeah. I know I forgot something. Yeah. That was really good though. Yeah. Remaining balance interest rate, um, the monthly payment, the PITI principal interest taxes, insurance, 
And then also too, I thought that was really solid. Um, there was one thing I wanted to mention at the start, but as we were speaking, I, I forgot, I should have made note of it. Alex, what did, you, did you have any feedback on that call? Yeah, I think at the beginning, it was just asking who you were speaking with. It should always be, you know, who you're speaking to before you make that call. So be like, hey, Jack, how's it going? As soon as you know that they picked up. Okay. And there was one other thing I'm trying to remember. But besides that, that was that was super solid. Um, yeah, that was that was good. Do you, do you have any questions then, I guess, in terms of, of that conversation or, oh, should I have said this? Should I have done this? Or, But to me, that sounded really solid. Yeah, well, I, I just don't know if I jump into the takeover payments soon enough or or because I try to build report as much as I can. But like I said, obviously, this is a control environment and and obviously everything goes goes as planned and, and, and of course, it's for practice. But, you know, when you're dealing with that it's like when I because I always like to ask that question from the get go. Is it an OK time to, to talk? Um, you know, some of them is like, well, I'm I'm doing a showing, but how can I help you? You know, I always go with something like, hey, look, I'm not in a hurry. If you want to call me back, I was calling about this property. No, go ahead. How can I help? You? So right off the back, they're already in a rush, but they do want to have the phone call. And so for me to, you know, excuse my French, shoot the shit, uh, to try to build some report, it's kind of like out the window because I want to be respectful of their time. But at the same time, you know, I, I, I want to talk about the property. So, yeah, you know, yeah. I just want to know, you know, it, it, is that okay or is it too soon? Like, do I jump into it too soon? No, I thought that was I thought that was really good in terms of timing and everything. The only thing I can think of, and this was the part that I wanted to touch on, was having more of a transition into disqualifying your traditional offer to then pivoting into taking over the payments. Because I think you were saying like, um, I see here there's not much equity in this one. Is there a forbearance or something like that? We usually just come in and take over the payments. Um, like one thing I've, I've typically said before too, is like, well, on our database here on our end, um, you know, I'm looking here in terms of a cash sale or a traditional offer where we'd be at, it'd likely be much lower than where the seller would need to be. Um, just because it looks like here, if, if they sold at, at ask price, they would be, you know, pretty much breaking even or, or taking a loss. So what we do typically on scenarios like this, where there's not a lot of equity in a deal is we come in and we take over and then boom, you go and pivot into that. But then, of course, too, we don't know for sure 100% if those numbers are exact until we get them from the agent. Um, because sometimes, you know, the prop stream data and other data isn't 100% accurate. It's never 100% accurate until we see a picture of the, the mortgage statement or those exact numbers from the agent directly. But um, I think that's definitely a, a good way to go about it. What do you, what do you think there, Alex? Yeah, I uh, just... Think of every number before you see the mortgage statement as just a rough estimate. Mm -hmm. You only really know the exact details until you have that in, in place. And then, Jonathan, I see you with your hand raised. Go ahead. Hi, Jack. How you doing? Doing um, well. How about you? Good, good, good. Thank you for earlier today. And Alex, thank you for yesterday. Um, of course. I think, I think for the most part, for me starting now, I think is being confident when you lack knowledge in a, in a scenario where your opponent or the uh, opposing person is uh, in control of the environment and sort of sort of say, you know, you jump into their world and uh, you'll be surprised on how much they lack knowledge too in certain aspects. So if that makes it, that, gives me like a little confident boost earlier today. And then also in reference to the gentleman, Victor, um, he was speaking earlier, like the fact that the way he guided the conversation towards his like next topic, controlling the conversation, so to say, or leading it to a certain path where he already has like the next response or, you know, just the way he guided the conversation towards, uh, towards his benefits you know, towards where he wanted to go. So I thought that was pretty good. And that's something that in reference uh, when you was talking to him or the way you were responding to him, I can tell that you have that too, you know, 
which takes practice as well. But um, I think that was very important. Gotcha. Appreciate you for sharing that. Yeah. And that's one thing too, in terms of the confidence, like I, I, of course it's easier said than done, but not being super nervous on the phone, as long as you have the basic fundamentals down and understanding the concept of what it is. If someone asks some sort of question where you're like, I have no idea, then it'd be like, honestly, my partners do this all the time. I'm one of the newer guys on the team. Um, they just bought two houses last week by taking over the existing payments I'd totally be happy to set up a three-way call with with my partner and I where he could go a lot more in-depth and explain these things and answer any sort of questions you have. Um, and then it's basically just kind of pivoting it back off to one of us if, uh, you know, if there's some confusion there on your end. Um, of course, though, we don't want to do that with every single call. If, if an agent's like, well, how does this work? Can you explain that further for me? Because um, then in terms of like Alex and I, for our time, um, if we're getting a bunch of agents that want to have three-way calls that aren't open to sub two or don't haven't given numbers or anything like that, of course we can do them occasionally, but we just can't have a flood of like, Hey, every agent I speak with, I don't know how to explain sub two. Let me do a three-way phone call. If that makes sense. No, it does. It does definitely. And then the one thing I love about this is also, uh, it's more of a, you know, cause, um, participating and enrolling and you get um, certain highlights, you cover a lot of topics, every topic you cover it, but it's more of do it yourself, so to say. So is uh, you go out there, you do it, um, and it, it just boosts you up a little bit more and it, it builds you up and, and it helps you uh, just feel